case, but one of the powers and the duties of the uh, Water Commission shall adopt rules and regulations pertaining to the distribution and use of water. And uh, in the opening statements here, it was governing water use restrictions. So I, I think it's important that the, there be input uh, from the Water Commission when they can secure a quorum. They were not able to secure a quorum last time um, uh, for a couple reasons. But um, I think the input from the Water Commission would be uh, valuable uh, to this. I, I think they're going to agree with it anyway, but I think it's important to respect the Commission and its roles. So that's that's. What so let me read this. Stage zero, which is normal, it's two phase, two pieces of it. In the winter, October 1st through April 30th, no restrictions. Stage zero normal for the summer, May 1st through September 30th, voluntary water conservation. Outdoor water use on odd and even days between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Residents with odd number addresses may water lawns on odd number days. Residents with even number addresses may water lawns on even number days. Stage one, which is advisory, mandatory water conservation, lawn watering restricted to two times per week per precinct between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. as follows. Precinct one, Monday and Thursday, precinct two and three, Tuesday and Friday, and precinct four, Wednesday and Saturday. Stage two, which is called watch, Mandatory water conservation, lawn watering restricted to one time per week per precinct between 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. as follows. Precinct 1, Monday. Precinct 2 and 3, Wednesday. And precinct 4, Friday. Stage 3, which is warning, mandatory water conservation, outdoor water use restricted to handheld hoses, water can with person in attendance for irrigation of shrubs, flowers, and garden only. The following are prohibited, lawn watering, swimming pool filling, washing of cars, trucks, boats, buildings, and cleaning of driveways. <coughs> Excuse me. Stage four, emergency, water, mandatory water conservation, no outdoor water use, water use restricted to normal bathing, cooking, laundry, and sanitary use, or to meet the core function of a business or maintenance of livestock. At this point, I'll open up the uh, discussion to anyone in the audience that may have a question. Just, okay. yeah. just, just before, uh, as part of the proposal, as the uh, bylaw section that's being proposed, there's a suggestion, which becomes a mandate, <laughs> uh, that anybody who has the irrigation systems have these uh, uh, equipped with a rain sensing device approved by the DPW and watering automatically prevented and that sort of a thing. Okay. What's the cost associated with, with purchasing and installation and maintenance of those things? I mean, I have no idea. I think they're cheap. They're probably $25 or less. For and that was actually, the existing bylaw had that in there. That's not nothing new to the town. Uh, it, it may have been in there, but it was never enforced. Right. And I, I would be quite honest with you. I, uh, news, news to me. I had but, the same question. But the, uh, but as far as the installation of, I mean, and at some point, I mean, there's an automatic triggering device as far as a timer when, they, when these sprinklers go off. So this would override that timer. Right. If, right. It's like I a would cup think. that fills up with water. Sorry. And I'm when sorry. it fills up with water, it, it causes a, a connection that'll not allow the pump come, to come on. So it's based on getting a certain amount of water, and it will override the automatic sprinkler. Right. Okay. And then that water the dissipates or evaporates. So it doesn't stay field over. Right. And again, what's being proposed is a mandatory installation of this device for anybody who has a, an irrigation system. Connected to the town's water supply. Connected to that. Well, and then you're also suggesting that it be mandated to just a private water like supply. Said, it's not a mandate. Okay, but the when I say public one. Yeah, it's for the public one, it, it was the existing bylaw, and it, it makes good sense. It um, saves the homeowner water as well, get the same effect on the lawn. And for people that aren't hooked, there's a lot of people in town that have uh, private wells for irrigation, not hooked up to the town supply or their, the home is on a well. We're just suggesting it might be a good idea to try it. Might but, save some time and money. But you actually use the word shall. Yeah. The people, I believe it says shall. Private you know, wells private. shall register. Well, the registration. Register with, with, yeah. He was just talking about the rain sensor at that point. Yeah. Right. Okay, but now the, the but shall I think you shift and, and a little just, bit. 
if we could go back to two years ago, remember we had um, an issue with what was going on. We tried to shut down the water use and really didn't have any idea who was on a well, who wasn't on a well. So this is simply so we know the people that are on a well that aren't in the town's water supply, we don't need to worry about them. They can, they're not affecting the water tanks going down. So we're just looking to have information that allows us to bypass them. In addition to the rain sensor, which I had an issue with the mandating that, you also are suggesting that uh, should be backflow prevention devices that's, installed as well? That's mass plumbing code. Yeah, you have to, you have, to have that anyway. If you're going to have a, a, a irrigation system? So that's, well, well, I don't know what it's it is. part of the code. Just a check so, valve. So you you yeah. drive through our neighborhood, Sean's lawn is turning brown in the summer, so is mine. I mean, so water can <laughs> flow in one direction. Right. All right. Yeah, it's uh, a good education. Good example is take a shower, somebody flushes the toilet, the water goes hot or cold. Mm -hmm. That's called backflow. Mm -hmm. The water's being pulled away from you. In, in a worst case scenario, if you had a, a hose in a bucket of chemicals and somebody did a water change of the pressure, that would be sucked into the water system. So, so that's the, if that. you have a system, it, you're, you already have that. That's what you say. Is that what you're going to have it anyway? It's, what you're it's, it's, mass, it's supposed to be in there. It's, it's mass plumbing code. Okay, so it's right. nothing. Additionally, at most people would have to no, incur no. an expense. No. But, Mr. Chair, then they. Mr. Chair. Yeah, if, if it is, I'm sorry, will you finish? Go ahead. No, if you'll finish, no, go ahead. No, no, if right. you finish, I'm sorry, you finish. I'm nope, good. go ahead. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm yeah, good. No, I'm I'm good. Mean to interrupt. Mr. You. Okay. Uh, if, it's, if, if it's part of mass plumbing code, mm -hmm. I would think that we don't really need to have it in our bylaw to, I mean, it's just duplication. Uh, I would advise we have it in there. I looked at several communities, Topsfield, Concord, a couple of them, and they specifically had those in there. I understand that, but, I mean, we don't really need to duplicate mass plumbing. Yeah, it's I, not, I, it's other, it's other not duplicating the code. It's just recognize suggesting. recognize that they have to meet the code. Now, there's some, you know, I may attempt some weekend to put an right. irrigation system in, <laughs> in my yard, which would be a disastrous situation, and I probably wouldn't be meeting code. So if you have it in your bylaw, you know, it would just require, again, just a, a reaffirmation of what's required. I don't think there's any harm done in, in acknowledging that that's, uh, that's a requirement, even though it's up to code. But, but I don't disagree. It may be redundant. Right. Sometimes I mean, redundancy is good. I don't know. Sometimes it just confuses the situation <coughs> for, for people. So. Are you all set? Yep. Set. I just have one Let's more. Start, if I could just read one thing to make sure I understand what this means. It says, all outdoor irrigation systems, whether connected to the public water supply or not, shall be registered with the Department Department of Public Works. A fee may be charged for the registration and said fee shall be set by the Board of Selectmen. So could you just explain, the one, the process, the, is it labor intensive, and two, what you were thinking on the fee? And, and then why, and also why um, watering systems that are not tied to the public? Again, during the water emergency two years ago, um, a lot of issues with who was hooked into the water system, who wasn't. This would simply allow us to know who has a private well, and they're not affecting the public supply issue, public safety issue for the water tank going up and down. So we can simply bypass it. And a couple examples of other communities, Concord is just a, is what they do. I think as the last time we did this, we people that put wells in are required to register, I think, the initial testing with the health department. So we looked at their records, so that would be a starting point. Mr. Dillon. Uh, Dick, I, I can understand having those that have wells register if we had a system of a water meter uh, measuring system where we could identify by just looking at each household as to who's using water and why. But we don't have that yet. Unless this is what's leading up to hopefully changing a uh, water meter, meter system. Uh, but we don't have that right now. So Correct. It, you're, you, the bylaw will require them to have a sign up front. So I would imagine the policing will, will be by driving through neighborhoods to see if we've 
have some sort of drought situation and we've come in with some advisory or some right. water restriction. That's how it's going to be policed. We so used the police the last time and that's one of their feedback to us was it's hard to tell who was on a well who wasn't without a sign it from. Right, and I can understand why you would want to sign, but I don't know what purpose it would serve if you had required them to register those that had wells. Right. Because it's not going to give you anything in addition unless we had a different type of water reader meter system. Right. That sounds right. And that's five times. <laughs> Tough to minute. say, but Mark it, is. unless, Mark, you could add something? I, I did just want to add, uh, in the state drinking water code, there is a requirement that private wells not be interconnected with the public water system. So part of the, uh, the registration process would be then, then to go out. If you want to keep your supply from the public water system, a lot of people put a private well in and connect their outside spigots to that private well. So the piping is actually coming into the house. It has to be physically disconnected from the public water system. It can't just be a closed valve. It can't just be, you know, a simple, uh, I'm going to swap from one to the other. It has to be physically separated because that, that's a backflow condition. If you have a well and you're putting chemicals on your lawn and you're drawing or you're too close to your septic system, you could potentially be pumping that water back to the public water system. So that that's part of the reason to register and to actually have this, you know, this permit type form to go out and, and sign off to make sure that everything was done properly. And it's it's just an extension. We actually do something similar to this now. But if you're putting in a private well, there's a, uh, a form with the Board of Health to register that you're putting the well in, and then we go out and take a look at it after. So it's kind of a continuation of yeah, okay. the process we're doing. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Again, just as a follow-up on the uh, uh, the requirement for these rain devices and uh, backflow. I mean, the backflow is already required, but these uh, rain sensors. sensors um, and again, as far as the signage too, is this signage going to be something that we're going to be providing, which would be a uniform type signage, you know, private well water, uh, if someone comes, applies, registers, because I know the, the last go around when we had the big drought and all the rest, you know, some people were watering lawn somewhere, and I think probably all of us got some sort of a call, you know, how come they're doing it, we're not, and how come we're not enforcing it, and you know, and you're, you know, my response would be they probably have a private well. Some people do have the little signs, some people did not. Um, I mean, so if we're going to get into this business um, of restricting and controlling uh, to the degree that we need to, my, th my guess is that we probably need some sort of uniformity in order for proper recognition. That being said, there's a cost associated with providing it and doing it. Is that what's being proposed necessarily or not necessarily? Make signs or sell signs at? We sell, we made signs at at that 2010 emergency, we had signs made. They were 1587, and we sell them for 16 dollars. So we basically just, you know, if if we come out and inspect your house, you have a well, and you want to purchase a sign from the town, it's 16 dollars for the sign. But it, would this be sort of a mandatory thing? You now need to purchase the sign because to me, that's almost what you need to do in order to have uniformity and understanding in the community as to who's using it and who's allowed to do it and who's not. I mean, it makes certainly sense. makes sense from the, you know, the police standpoint. We got a list from the Board of Health. We supplied it to the police. You know, they're looking through a, a seven-page sheet and, you know. Right. And again, we were looking for our law enforcement to enforce, you know, a bylaw, which is a, falls under their purview, but generally they have some other important business to tend to, yeah. and it makes better better use of their time if they're just driving by and see it. And again, the only way that they can acquire this authorized signature is, is through the town. That, you know, for, if it's a, that's a nominal fee if it's $16 or $20 for the fee to get the, the sign for the <coughs> private wealth. I think that's, that's fairly reasonable. Um, you know, as far as other associated fees, I'd be interested to see what the fee schedule is that's going to be proposed. Michael and then Jim. I, I agree with Mr. O'Leary because um, on my lawn I have a small little sign about that big that says um, private water. But I believe the police told me that I received, they received more calls on my house than any house in North Reading. So, um, <laughs> shocker! <laughs> I think it's a good idea that we actually have a consistent sign. 
that's actually bright enough so everybody can see it. And because uh, mine is very small and a little much bit, and you know, I thought it.